Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is Unit 1, Lesson 6, on the different types of government that exist around the world. In a civics and government class, you probably already know a fair amount about U.S. government as it is. You might, at the very least, know that we are a democratic government and we have a representative democracy because we choose representatives to make decisions and public policies for us that help us govern our lives. However, it's really important to know about the different governments that exist and persist around the world. So today's lesson is going to do just that. And then, of course, the next lesson is going to delve deeper into the different types of lifestyles that citizens endure under different types of government. Let's go ahead and get started. Before I do, please let me encourage you to open up your Google Doc for today's lesson and type in any content and or answer key concept questions that exist throughout the document as we go. Remember, you can replay any part of this presentation that you might need for help and clarity. So how do we classify governments around the world? To classify governments, historians typically look at three things. Who can participate in the governing process, the geographic distribution of governmental power, and the relationship between the legislative and executive branches of government. Today, we're going to look at different forms of government that exist. And by analyzing these three factors, we're going to classify governments into different categories as well. This diagram pretty much helps explain the status of the world today in regards to different forms of government. There's free countries, partly free countries, and not free countries. Before we go forward, you might be wondering what separates these three different types of countries. Some would say it's the amount of power that people have and the amount of you know, autonomy that they can exert over their own lives with government in mind. Some would also say it's the type of leaders that lead these countries in the governments that we speak of. It's a combination of all those things and more. This map explains an even further breakdown of the different types of political systems that exist around the world. Just as the world is unique and eclectic, so too are the governmental systems that help us understand uh, the world and how it functions. Let's look at democracy first. Democracy is the supreme political authority that rests in the people. Government conducted only with the consent of the people, and this can be direct or indirect. As you're aware, we live in a democracy. In theory, everyday citizens have a voice, a voice in their rights and responsibilities, and also a voice in the way upon which they interact with their government. In a free society, typically we associate democratic values with that. Let's look at indirect democracy. Also known as representative democracy, this is a group chosen by people to create public policies. This exists at the national, state, and local levels of government. An example of this would be the United States of America, because we choose representatives to help govern our country and to lead us. There's also direct democracy. This is also known as pure democracy. The people themselves create the public policies and make decisions. Now, it should be noted that this only works at small or local levels. For example, Swiss cantons practice this, and so might clubs and organizations too. Dictatorships. A dictatorship can be described as an authoritarian government. This is where rulers have absolute and unchallengeable power over the people. Those who rule are not held responsible by the people. They can typically do whatever they want. Uh, dictatorships are the oldest and most common form of government in history. For example, there's fascist Italy, Nazi Germany, and the Soviet Union. Dictatorships can be autocratic or even oligarchies. And here's what I mean by those two words. An oligarchy is where power is held by a small or self-appointed elite group of people. This could be a military, religious leaders, or even family members. Examples of oligarchies consist of Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Russia. An autocracy, however, is a government in which a single person holds unlimited political power. This is where the ruler pretty much keeps power, and they have a state control over all aspects of life of the citizenry. An example of this might be North Korea, Syria, Zimbabwe, and Belarus in Europe. There's also theocratic governments. A theocracy is a legal system of a state which is based on religious laws or teachings. For example, Iran is a present-day theocracy. Typically, theocracies have laws that are passed in government, but they must be compatible with the religious doctrines or moral codes of that said religion. So, for example, in the Vatican City, where Catholicism is the religion, because the Pope lives there, and that's where the Catholic Church is stationed, you can imagine that Catholicism pretty much dictates the way that that particular government or that particular country runs. The same thing could be said true of, say, maybe um, 
Middle Eastern countries that are heavily influenced by Islam, and they might have those Islamic influences in government today. And then there's anarchy. This is a system of government where there basically is no government, no law or order. Disorder usually results due to lawlessness. A society entirely rejects hierarchy. An example of an anarchy might be Somalia in Africa, South Sudan, small autonomous municipalities that do not subscribe to any form of governmental rule. When we look at governments, we also must look at the geographic distribution of power. This refers to the way that government exists and persists with other institutions. There's unitary governments, federal governments, and confederate governments. Real quick in a nutshell, a unitary government is a central government which creates local units of government for its own convenience, whereas a federal government has a national government and then states or co-equal partners. And then there's confederate governments, which is where most power belongs to the local regional governments. There's advantages and disadvantages to all three styles of governments. So a centralized government is often called the unitary government where all powers are held by a single central agency. Most governments are unitary in the world. Great Britain, for example, has a parliament which holds all the power. It's not necessarily a dictatorship, but the power is definitely centralized. Then there's the federal government, one where powers are divided between central and local powers. For example, the United States of America has a national government with certain powers and states have other types of responsibilities and rights. And those uh, actions can, of course, be present during different times. This is determined by the US Constitution. There's also the Alliance of Independent States or Confederation. A confederation is where a central power only can handle the things that the states allow it to do. There are limited powers in foreign affairs and defense. For example, if you remember learning about the Confederacy, you could say that the Confederate States of America is an example of that. And the European Union, too, is a modern day example of a confederation. And there still is power in the different types of organizations that exist and persist from all three types and styles of government. Let's look at presidential governments here. As we said before earlier on, looking at legislative and executive relationships is a key way of classifying governments. In a presidential government, the separation of executive and legislative branch are key to understanding that they are co-equals. The president is chosen by the people and holds office for a fixed term. The president has some powers, but they're not controlled by the legislature. They can pretty much act on their own. But the powers and separation are dictated by the Constitution. For example, in the United States, the President of the United States can act on his or her own. And in some ways, of course, they definitely need the legislature too. But it should be noted that those two separate bodies act sometimes at cross purposes. Then there's parliamentary government. The executive branch is made up of a prime minister or premier and their cabinet. The prime minister is the leader of the majority party in the legislature, so they're part of the legislature and chosen by it. They remain in office as long as the rest of the legislature supports their policies. A vote of no confidence forces the prime minister and their cabinet to resign. The makeup of the majority or governmental party, of course, this consists of the different ways that most of the governmental systems operate in the world. This eliminates some of the deadlock that exists in presidential government. For example, right now, many people would say American government is divided. However, parliamentary governmental systems are able to work together sometimes to move an agenda forward. At this time, please go ahead and fill out your graphic organizer or the notes that you have to make more sense of the different types of government that exist in the world. Please remember you can replay any part of this presentation that you need for help or for clarity. Thank you very much.